Right, so in I go to the East Bay Card Show in Concord, California. We got there right when it opened, and it filled up not long after. Anyone that's saying that card show attendance is down was not there on Saturday afternoon, because it was pretty packed. So first table right off the bat, I saw a couple of cards that caught my eye there. That 59 Willie Mays on the left and the 69 Pete Rose. Kind of put those in my memory. Back in a Pete Maravich rookie showed up as well. Got some of those 52 tops look and sees there. Got a couple of the Mickey Mantle cards. Those are actually dog food cards, but a really, really nice set. Cool cards. And then I found Russell over here, really nice guy, and he had some bunch of autographs of guys from the 90s and late 80s. And I started going through. There's an Alan Trammell in there. There's a Tim Brown. There's a few guys, few Hall of Famers, and maybe even future Hall of Famers in there. And I didn't buy any, but it was like a blast from the past of different prospects and players from growing up in my collecting days. Had a lot of fun looking through those and talking to this dealer. His name's Russell. He is a big-time vintage dealer and has a whole bunch of stuff, has bought a bunch of different estate lots and things, and we'll look at some, some of his cards here in just a second. I'm talking to him as I'm looking through all of these cards. And he had a few more of these autographs that I'm looking through. Obviously, these are not authenticated, but you can kind of tell that they're legit. And coming up, there's a couple more Hall of Famers in here. There is a, a one that I really kind of thought about was right there, that Dennis Eckersley. Caught that in my eye, and I was thinking about that one. And then that Tommy John. I think Tommy John is eventually going to get into the Hall of Fame. So after I was looking at those autographs, I started looking through some of his vintage stuff, and he has some really cool stuff. Um, I mean, this Johnny Mize I really considered picking up it is really well centered 1950 Bowman Johnny Mize he's asking 20 on it which seemed very reasonable um part of me wishes I went back and bought that one but I I didn't got a nice 56 Ernie Banks these are a little bit in the rougher condition uh, that although that 58 Herman Killebrew was pretty cool um and and I'm talking to him having a good time I met him for the first time on Saturday, the day of the show. And in a minute, I'm going to take a look at his showcase, and he had some pretty cool stuff. He's picked up some big lots of stuff, and you'll see I swung by later in the show, and a lot of it was gone. He's got some of the, you can see the caramel cards there. He had some T206s, some T205s. Uh, he, had, he had quite a few different things, um, and we'll, we'll take a look at those case cards in a second. A couple Hank Aaron's in there. Again, those were a little rough, but still Hank Aaron cards, right? Have you not set up here before? No. And so he was telling me he'd seen the channel before, which was super cool. Um, again, a really, really cool guy. And I'm having a great time talking to him as going through these cards. You can see that some of the T206s in here. And, you know, he was asking very reasonable prices on them, 30 40 bucks. They're, again, because they're in fairly rough shape, but, you know, still cool to have. I love the T206s in landscape like this one here on its side. Uh, those cool cards are always cool. And then, again, a couple T205s and then another cool T206. That's a nice-looking one there. Now, do you have any Hall of Famers in here? Or are they I mostly? do, yeah, it's quite a few. So you can see in his case here, he's got some caramels, some old judges, some T205s, T206s, a couple Cracker Jacks. Uh, 48 Leaf Ted Williams. That's a sweet card. I did a thing a the other day. Sweet like, 48 Ted Williams. You can hear me talking to him about. In, like existence. And several people said that card. Yeah, it, it's up there. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and take a closer look at some of these. So. 
I asked to grab a few of them. So we've got an Addy Joss caramel card. He's a Hall of Famer. Again, it's pretty rough, and, and obviously you'll see on the back here in a second. You know, it came out of an album, but that's a super rare card. The pop report on that is very low. And you can see even in that rough shape. You know, I think he was asking $525, which is pretty reasonable considering the rarity of the card. And then he had a, a Chief Bender that I took a look at. He's got a few pretty cool cards. You can see the old judges there that I take a look at here in a second as well. You don't see the American Caramels at shows all that often, at least not at local card shows like this. So when you do, you got to get a a pretty good look at them because they're just cool to look at again we're i'm having a good time i could have sat pulled up a chair and sat and talked to him for an hour we would have had a, a good time well i would have had a good time at least so again i grab a couple more anytime you see an old judge at a local card show that is pretty darn cool and i mean you know they're they're the backs are skinned pretty good, but they're still old judge cards, and most of them are. And here is that 48-leaf Ted Williams. It is beautiful for a one. You can see the crease there through the middle of the card on the right and the left of his hip area. But the color is great. The centering is great. The eye appeal is great. I mean, it is as nice of a one as you'll probably see. He was asking a thousand on it. So I kept on moving and I went over to my buddy Mo's table and Mo always brings some huge cards you can see in here. Chamberlain and Oscar Robertson rookie cards. You got some big big Michael Jordan cards and uh, Lou Alcindor rookie, a Pete Maravich rookie, a Bob Cousy rookie. And then he's also got some modern stuff as well. If you're interested, there's Mo's information. Feel free to reach out to him. He's a great guy. And this is still Mo's table. Some really good stuff. He's got some really high-grade stuff. He set up at the Burbank Card Show, the most recent Burbank Card Show, and he said he'll be at the the next one in February. You got all these Nolan Ryan rookies, all those mantles. I mean, mantle after mantle. You got some maze cards. Clemente, 69 Clemente's up at the top. And then he's just got boxes of cool stuff. And we'll take a look here at some of that cool stuff. These boxes are loaded with sweet cards. And I started digging in. And I got some Ronnie Lott rookies. He's obviously a big name in the Bay Area. You got a Lawrence Taylor rookie, a John Elway rookie. I mean, his his case, his boxes are just loaded with cards like this, which is kind of amazing. I mean, just oh yeah, no problem. It's just a Joe Montana PSA eight rookie card and an Earl Campbell card and a another Lawrence Taylor rookie card. So he's got some big time stuff. So I always spend quite a bit of time in his boxes and in his case and and he's a fun guy to talk to as well so i always enjoy doing that and he has some vintage football you can see the jim brown you got a star back there joe theisman rookie card emma smith so yeah, I, I, I mean, he literally sets up chairs next to these boxes because people just park a spot for an hour because it's just, it's incredible what he's got in these boxes. And he recently bought a bunch of maze cards. So he's got the 60 maze all-star. That thing was nice. The 60 maze. Okay. 61 maze. 63 maze. I mean, it's just card after card after card. That's a pretty nice six. 68 there. So, yeah, I mean, 
most tables big. I turned to my dad. My dad was standing there at the moment. I was talking to him about the 61 stamps. I don't understand why those aren't worth more. Came in the packs in 1961. It seems like they would be hard to be in good condition, but like that's in a five for 40 bucks, but that's what they go for. You could hear me asking my dad, I don't get it, dad. Why aren't those worth more? He's like, I agree. They're cool. And I kept digging through his boxes. I spent probably 45 minutes looking through this stuff. And one of the cool things is he's just got tons of, like, stuff from my era. You know, all these late 70s through late 80s stuff in those boxes as well. Now, I really thought about these two. You know, this 75 Mini Carl Yastrzemski uh, for 8 bucks, And a Rod Carew Mini 75 for 8 bucks. They were a little off center top to bottom which is the reason i didn't do it but they went into my mind as a place to maybe swing back for because they are very cool you get a lot of those kellogg's cards those kellogg's cards are pretty cool love the 71 pete rose card there's a Ozzy Smith rookie card. I saw a few Ozzy Smith rookie cards at this show that you'll see pop up on the video. The thing about Ozzy Smith rookie cards, it's so hard to find centered. So when you find one that is well centered, there is such a premium on that card because they just there are not many of them. But again, yeah, it's like you know Olympic cards and Bo Jackson cards and Tony Gwynn rookies and you know I just I love this stuff. So then I made my way down to my guy, Craig. Craig is the guy I bought quite a bit of stuff from at the recent Fairfield show. This was some of his raw stuff. This 68 Clemente, I really gave a good look to. I even pulled it aside. He was asking 30 bucks on it. And, and this 71 Clemente was also very nice. He's asking 100 on that. The problem is they just grade those cards so tough. The 68 had a little bit, one corner just bugged me just a little bit. So I ended up just really struggling with whether to get it or not. He had a lot of raw Clementes. Again, I set a few aside and looked at them closer. 65 Ernie Banks, a 65 Clemente. This had a touch on the corners, but the centering was pretty solid for a 65. And there's another 71 Pete Rose. Again, I think that's a beautiful card. A Steve Garvey rookie. So I've bought raw cards from Craig before several times. Um, so I always enjoy looking through his pile of raw stuff. Orlando Cepeda is a local guy in Northern California. He still lives really close to where we were here in Concord. Probably about 20 minutes from here is where he lives. Nice Billy Williams as well. 30 bucks. So I'm looking through his case and catching up with him and a couple other friends that were checking in. And, again, I always look forward to Craig's stuff, so I'm giving a really what good look. Turn out with that My dad is looking at a few cards, too. He's got a pile out at this moment, and he's about to look through those. Later in this video, I'm going to show you all the stuff my dad walked away with. He walked with a haul from this show and sometimes I don't show his stuff that he buys sometimes I do today you're going to want to see all the stuff he got because he did really well got some 56 mantles got the Prez steel mantle autographs again he's always got really good stuff so a couple cards caught my eye in the case so I asked to take a look at those one of them is a second year 1969 Johnny Bench card with the rookie trophy. Pretty nice card. If I could look at the Bench rookie as well. One of the corners was a little soft, but it was a fair grade. I mean, I think it was probably a fair grade. I wouldn't say it was undergraded, but it was a fair grade. And then I really liked the look of the rookie. 
180 bucks for a four. Little off center side to side, but the corners look really nice. So these two cards also went up into my think tank, and I started to kind of think about these. My dad's looking really hard at this card. This is a gorgeous card. This World Series faux card is so cool. And this one's really well centered, really good eye appeal, really good color. So I kept on moving, and there was some, you know, Bay Area stuff, some Warriors stuff, some 49ers stuff. There's a Candlestick Park seat back signed by some of the 49ers. Got a Steph Curry autograph with some replica rings. Look at all this stuff. And then some Bill Walsh autographs. Those. Bill Walsh in this area is huge. We love Bill Walsh. And he was wanting, I think, 300 a piece for those, which is more than I was going to spend. And so I'm looking through this case, and what in the heck does my guy Scott have? Now, Scott, you've seen me buy things from Scott before. He's got a Ty Cobb cut auto there. That was nuts. And it's a beautiful autograph. And he says, oh, yeah, uh, I picked up a, a second one. So he hands this one to me, and I'm like, you have two Ty Cobb cut autos? So this one has a whole sentence. It's talking about the watch that, you know, he picked up, and he signs it with his initials. It's got a whole couple of sentences in there. You can see back when people actually took pride in their handwriting. So that was super cool. And then I'm talking to Scott a little bit, and I'm like, you know, show me this 54 Bowman Whitey Ford. I really like this card. He was asking 100 on it, which is a little over comps, but it's pretty well centered. And I'm, I'm joking with him about the lighting at his table. So he pulls out his light from his phone and he puts a spotlight on it. And it's in a five. Really like this Whitey Ford Bowman card. One of my favorite Whitey Ford cards. I haven't bought anything today, and I'm like, I can't. And uh, so again, that one goes into the brain to think about for a little bit. I usually don't buy cards right on the spot, so I said, you know, I want to get a better look at that 69 Pete Rose and 59 Willie Mays that I saw at the very first table. So I'm starting to make my second round now, and I'm looking at this thing going, wow. It's centered beautifully. The corners and edges are so sharp. And it's a two. Why is it a two? And I'm searching for, is there a stain? Is there a crease? I'm not really seeing anything. It's asking 115 on it. And they usually go for a little, right around that, maybe a little less. And I take a close look there, and I go, ah, I see it. There's a big crease along the top right-hand corner I point out there to my dad who's on my shoulder. And then I take a look at this 69 Pete Rhodes, which was really nice corners, really great color on the card. But it had a little bit of a diamond cut just beyond the amount I can handle without it driving my OCD eyes crazy. So I, I decided to walk on this one, but it's a really nice 69 Pete Rose in a PSA 6. So I went out with my dad in the lobby, and he goes, well, p check out the cards I picked up. Well, check out what he picked up. Now, remember, my dad doesn't pay sticker, so all of these he got for somewhere between 10 and 20% off. So you got that cool, you got, I mean, look at this. It's just great card after great card. He's got a 62. Aaron, he, he ended up picking up that World Series foes card. He had the Ozzy Smith rookie. You got a 69 Hank Aaron. And this one's in a four, but really presents well. And then a big one. He bought a 56 tops Ted Williams in a four. And it's pretty darn sharp. And then that Willie Mays All-Star card. Again, I would say probably averaged 15% off. But my dad walked with quite a haul. And I'm like, I haven't even bought anything yet. Well, part of the reason for that 
is on the drive down. My dad was driving. I was working the phone, working on an Instagram deal, and this card caught my eye. I got oh wait, it's Richie Ashburn and Willie Mays, and it's forty-five bucks and a five, and it looked pretty darn nice. So that one also went up into my think tank. So I was in the middle of a deal with Instagram when I walked into the show. So I'm, I'm in the back of my mind going, I might be pulling the trigger on a $250 card on this Instagram deal. And I'm waiting for a response on the dealer. So that's also in my mind. So I probably shouldn't have done that because I'm kind of thinking I'm going to be spending $250 on that card. And now here I am at a card show. So anything I buy would be on top of the 250. It was actually 240 that I offered on a T206 card. So that probably hindered my mind a little bit. And then I see this card, 8.5 of a Gretzky. That's about Gretzky's fifth year card or so. I think that's an 84 or an 85. So I kept on moving, and this guy had a bunch of really nice early 70s basketball. And, and in that one, he was asking 20, but, you know, we got a card with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt Chamberlain on it. And that's kind of cool. So I spent some time going through his boxes. I don't remember seeing this dealer at a show before. So a lot of the times when I've never seen a dealer before, I spend a little bit more time going through their boxes since I have no idea what they've got in there. I mean, look at the names on some of these cards. So I'm kind of pulling a few aside. And we got Havlicek, Alcindor, Elvin Hayes, it looks like. Got Jerry West on one. I mean, I mean, this is these these old leader cards. I really think are kind of up and coming, especially in baseball, where you've got some of the big time players, some of the all time greats on one card. But again, I mean, yeah, look at look at that group of guys on that card there. So I kept on going through his box. Now, again, I edit out some of it. I spend a lot more time, obviously, than I show you all. Um, I try to just show a few of the highlights. And, and, you know, a lot of the times I don't show a lot of basketball cards. So sometimes when I spend some time looking at basketball, I like to kind of show them off because I think basketball is great. In fact, I am working on a video right now for some vintage basketball stuff as basketball season has just begun so look out for that and then I'm, I'm looking through this table and I'm like we got like Carl's Yastrzemski's for a dollar this is a dollar box here we got some early Ricky Henderson's we got more Yastrzemski's you got a cool Reggie Jackson and I'm tempted to just make a giant pile but again I know I probably have a $250 payment to make here on the drive home so so I kept on looking. These are all priced as marked. You can see a lot of these are $5 cards. Then there's a 10 mixed in and stuff. I have an app that will do that. Yeah, some pretty cool stuff. And again, I mentioned earlier some Ozzy Smiths. These, are, again, are all way off center. When they're centered, there is such a premium on the price. And he had more vintage basketball. Again, this is the same guy. So you don't see these a lot. So when you do, for me, it's a lot of fun because I really like vintage basketball quite a bit. And then, bang, that seemed like a really good price. A really well centered. And these are tough centering. Really tough card. And it's a Jerry West, and I love that Jerry West card. So I'm thinking about that one now. And I got a bunch of 1950 Bowman commons for five bucks a piece that i'm now working my way through and now i've got about seven or eight cards in my mind and i'm going man do i want to get some of these one of these none of these what am i going to do 
And again, I just love boxes like this. This is like my childhood relived when you just have, you know, Kirby Puckett rookies and Greg Maddox rookies and Nolan Ryans. And I'm just like, I love, I love boxes like this. Wade Boggs rookies. So much fun. That's a cool card. So really enjoyed spending a lot of time at this table. He's probably getting sick of looking at me at this point. And then again, you know, Ryan Sandberg rookies, right? And Tony Gwynn rookies. And love all of that stuff so much. And then check this out. We got some Cal Ripkins and Don Mattingly's and another Ozzie Smith. But, of course, it's off center. Got a cool Bo Jackson. So at this point, I'm kind of like, oh, and I'm like, wait a second, a Lawrence Taylor rookie, a, a Tony Dorsett rookie? Should I, should I get one? And then look at this Durant card, 15 bucks. That card was hundreds two years ago. And I'm, at this point, I'm starting to say, you know what? I think I'm going to go hard for that card I worked on for the Instagram deal. I'm, I'm, I got to make that deal happen. That's where my mind is right now as the show is winding down. And so I'm like, man, there's a few cards I kind of want, but I think I want that T206 more. So, yeah, it happened. I left the card show, and I didn't buy a single card at the show. Can you believe that? 